2024 has turned out to be an amazing year for fossil hunting. I've discovered some beautiful ammonites and even some marine reptile bones. All of these finds were made on my local beaches here in the UK within 10 to 30 minutes in the car from my house. I've dedicated countless hours to exploring the shores in search of these ancient gems. The fossils all date back to the Jurassic time period around 180 to 200 million Hi everyone, years ago. Welcome back to another video. I'm at a different intro setting for today's video. Usually I'm down by the beach, but overnight we've had a really big storm hit the area where I live and all the rivers have flooded. So I thought I'd do a bit of filming at the very start just to show you that. This video is going to be my top 10 finds of the year. This initial find didn't quite make the top 10. It could very well be a top contender, but unfortunately I haven't had it back from preparation as of yet. I sent it to a professional who has a lot more experience than I do. It looks like it's got numerous small teeth that are quite difficult to prepare. So I thought it was worth sending it to someone who I trust to bring out the best in it. Stay tuned for the results. So all of the YouTube title says top 10 finds, I will be showing you 11 because I've got 11 favourite fossils and top 10 does sound better in a YouTube title. Let's begin with find number 11. I stumbled upon this in a rock pool at Kettleness. It didn't look very impressive at first but I soon noticed a warm bone sticking out of the rock. The rock was unfortunately full of pyrite which made it quite difficult to work on and prepare out but after spending several hours on it I uncovered a partial tail from an ichthyosaur. These vertebrae are all located at the far end of the creature. Number 10 is an interesting little find. During one of my hunts at Robin Hood's Bay, which is rich in lower Elias fossils, I stumbled upon an incredible little lobster piece. This marks a first for me, because I've discovered plenty of upper Elias lobster fossils, but none from this earlier, rarer time period. There's a specific name for the section of the lobster that I found, but I'll show it on the screen now. It's essentially the head or rostrum from the animal. It's such an amazingly detailed fragment and I can't wait to see if I can find any more unique lower Elias lobster fossils down the line. Nice size nodule and I've just given it a tap and have a look what was on the other side. A beautiful, looks like a semi salatum and it's a really chunky and big That'll one. That'll be a beast when it's prepared. Hopefully it's all in there, I mean it looks like it. Find number 9 prepared out beautifully, it's a large Dactyliostra semisolatum inside a really big nodule. I found it at Runswick Bay, one low tide, it's a really great display piece. If you'd like to come along with me on a fossil hunt, please hit that subscribe button and give the video a like. I make new long form fossil hunts every single week. Zooming in, you can see there's quite a few ammonites preserved within this block. So this is what I've got out of the block. Now it doesn't look amazing at the moment, but I'm gonna have a go at penning it. I can see quite a few ammonites sticking out. Arneoceros blocks are typically discovered along the Holness coast as erratic rocks that have traveled in from other locations. The ones that originate from Robin Hood's Bay, where I search, are often quite tough and extremely sticky. During a recent hunt, I actually stumbled upon one of these blocks. It was still really sticky, but I do suspect that it had been in the water for a little while, which made it a little bit softer than usual. If you'd like to get your very own fossil from the Yorkshire coast, and at the same time support the channel, please take a look at my website called buyafossil.com 
There's a bunch of beautiful prepared fossils all available for purchase found throughout the coastline. Please take a look if you are interested. Thank you very much. I'll be sharing two fossils for find number seven. They both belong to the same species, but they're equally quite impressive. The first larger one I discovered was from Sands End. I stumbled upon it early in the year, right at the start, and nearly forgot to add it to this top 11 list. Phyllosaurus ammonites are quite rare along the Yorkshire coast, as they typically break apart, leaving only fragments that are quite commonly found. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next Phyllosaurus ammonite. So I was just speaking to another fossil collector and right by my feet I spotted this. Now I could see a few Dactylioceros ammonites sticking out of the corners and there's a bit of fossil wood but on the top there's a huge Phyllosaurus ammonite. I've been a bit sneaky and I've got my chisel in but I don't know how well it's popped so let's have a look. Hopefully it's got loose. Oh, wow! The second Phyllosaurus ammonite is truly impressive. It came originally from Port Mulgrave, a place known for its remarkable specimens. Although it's smaller than the first, it does showcase a beautiful pyritic quality. It was quite an easy clean up job, it probably took me an hour or two to get it looking this nice. So here's the two Phyllosaurus ammonites side by side. Tell me which one do you prefer, the larger one or the smaller one? Discovery number six is a fragment of ichthyosaur skull. This section highlights the creature's nostril and part of the sclerotic ring, basically the eye plates. When I initially found, found it at Kettleness Corner, I had no idea what it actually was, but after some careful preparation, the mystery was finally revealed. It does leave you wondering whether the rest of it is hidden somewhere high up in the cliff, or if it's already been claimed by the sea years ago. The fifth hunt was truly unforgettable. I didn't come across much at Sands End that day, but then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I discovered this stunning plesiosaur vertebra. It required very minimal effort, just a quick clean and a bit of paralyte to keep the bone secure. Here on the Yorkshire coast, plesiosaur remains are really quite rare to find. It's more likely that you will come across an ichthyosaur bone, but still, you're going to have to search or get very lucky. Here's the next exciting discovery, number four. This time it's a lovely crocodile find from Port Mulgrave. I came across this while hunting on a video on my channel. The search didn't yield much until I noticed this gem in a rock pool. It took quite a bit of effort to prep out the vertebrae, they're quite small and there's also some scoots hidden underneath the rock. This year I've had a fantastic time searching for the rarer ammonite species. These are Asioceros ammonites from Robin Hood's Bay. I've been concentrating my efforts on the less explored lower lias areas and it's really paid off. At the beginning of the year I didn't have any of these species in my collection but thanks to some really dedicated searching in really focused areas I've been able to find a few. I was lucky enough to get an aerobrader earlier on in the year and that really brings out the best in these ammonites because the rock is actually quite a lot softer than the ammonite. It allows you to get out the middle without ruining it and it also leaves some really nice detail like 
some of the shell. When I discovered find number two at Saltwick Bay, it didn't seem like anything special at first. Just a bit of warm bone hidden within a pebble. However, when I got back to the workshop at home, I was thrilled to carefully uncover an incredible ichthyosaur paddle. Couldn't believe how beautifully the specimen actually turned out. Ichthyosaur paddles are one of the most sought after fossils on the Yorkshire coast. I think everyone wants to find one. Now let's talk about my top find. This fossil is definitely my personal favourite discovery of the year. It required a lot of preparation, but after plenty of air abrasion, I was able to uncover this stunning piece of ancient seabed. Inside you'll find multiple rare Gagatisserus ammonites. It's truly a snapshot of history, a moment frozen in time. I really do think that these rarer lower lias ammonites display beautifully. I'll show you a close up so you can see how detailed these pieces really are. That's my top 11 fossil finds of the year done. Tell me would you agree with the order I've put them in or would you place them differently? Hopefully you've all enjoyed this video and I'll see you all on the next one.